Hi, I'm West, and I love talking about the Astros, and I'm here to talk about Game 35 of the regular season. Astros lose 5-4. to four. Oh, man, against the Angels. And this one, this just sucked. Like, you ever have those games that just, they hurt? Because you were in it till the very end, right? You were, we were always in this game. And we had opportunities, and we just couldn't capitalize. We, have, we left 11 men on base. Uh, we were 4 for, like, 11. 4 for 14, good lord. Uh, with runners in scoring position. So this is just a massive missed opportunity for the Astros. And it's one of those games that if you're a fan, you just want to, you know, turn the TV off, you know, throw your head back, go, that sucked, and go to bed. I don't, I'm not, I don't get to do that. I, I now make a video for it after every game. So, Gar Luis Garcia gets the start. I thought he was fine. Uh, the, f the sixth inning, my goodness, was an implosion. Um... We'll get to that in due time. So first inning, Altuve draws a walk. Brantley draws a walk. Bregman hits a ground rule double. Altuve would score one nothing. And this was the first big missed opportunity because now you have Bregman and Brantley on second and third, no outs in the first inning. And you're bringing up three players who are very good. You know, a rookie of the year who will probably be an all-star this year at this rate, a first baseman who should make the all-star team, but probably won't because Astros 2017 rule ooga booga buzz buzz bang bang. Um, and for that reason alone probably won't. And Carlos Correa, who has made an all-star team and will probably get paid upwards of $200 million this offseason. And Jordan would strike out, Yuli would pop out, and Correa would strike out. That was the first big missed opportunity because you got two guys right there that can score easily. A single and it's 3 nothing in the first. Even just a sack fly, and it's 2 nothing at least. In the second, the Astros would get on the board again. Uh, Kyle Tucker would double. It's so nice to be seeing Kyle Tucker get rewarded for hitting the ball well. I'm super excited about that. Uh, so he would score on a straw single after that. T great read by Tucker, I want to mention also, to make it 2 nothing. There was a pitching change. Castro would walk. Altuve would go into a double play, but it was kind of a funky double play because it was the third... So it was Straw and Altuve double play instead of Castro and Altuve. So there was a runner at second. Uh, after that, Brantley would double. Castro would score to make it a 3 nothing game. Bregman would walk and Jordan would pop out. Jordan had a real rough night. I thought he was way too impatient tonight. Uh, he was overeager. And, you know, that could be kind of from yesterday since he had a fantastic game thinking, oh, I'm on top of the world. I'm not saying that he got cocky or anything in one game. I'm just saying it might have been a linger over of, oh, I can, you know, I can do this. Again, that's not an insult. That's just my thought. So then the fourth inning, Walsh would double, and Mike Trout would score to make it a 4-1 game. In the fifth, the Astros would get another run. With two outs, Correa would single, Tucker would walk, Straw would single, and Correa would score to make it a 4-1 game, and then Castro would ground out to end it. Again, another missed opportunity here because you got two runners on. I know it's two outs, but still, that would have been big. And then the sixth inning, the absolute implosion for the Astros pitching staff. Four runs given up. Walsh would homer to make it a 4-2 game. Walsh has been an absolute Astro killer. Uh, Upton, absolute nuke to left field, man. That thing was absolutely just smoked by Justin Upton to make it a 4-3 ball game. And now you start getting a little nervous. Uh, then Luis Garcia is pulled to bring in Brandon Belak. A walk, double play, or a walk and a double. Now you're getting into some trouble here. Uh, infield single to Correa. He bobbles the throw, and now it's a 4-4 four to four game. And then after that, a bunt and a bad throw by Brandon Belak. I don't think the throw would have got him anyway, even if Belak, you know, was perfect with it because it looked, he just had too good of a jump on it. And now it's a 5-4 game. A fly out. There's then another pitching change to bring in Brooks Raley, and I kind of thought that was going to be a kiss of death. It actually wasn't. Brooks Raley had a nice night. Uh, he would end up going and ending in a third uh, with only one wa or one hit and a walk allowed, and he would get three strikeouts, so that was a positive. And that was it for scoring. The Astros would threaten a few other times, but nothing serious. In the ninth, Yuli would get a double, which I was kind of hoping he would come around to score so I could, uh, you know, bust something out. But sadly, uh, I don't get to do that tonight. So, pitching lines for the game. Uh, Luis Garcia would go five and a third, five hits, three runs, two walks, seven strikeouts, matching a career high for him. Uh, Brandon Belak would come in one third of an inning, real bad night for him. 
Two hits, two runs, a walk, no strikeouts. Brooks Raley would come in, and he would allow a hit and a walk, but strike out three and one and a third. Joe Smith came in and actually was pretty fine. Uh, two-thirds of an inning, one hit, uh, no walks, no runs, no strikeouts. And then Kent Emanuel would come in for an inning and a third and allow one walk, no hits, no runs, and get a strikeout himself. Kent Emanuel, man, seemingly a very good call-up for a guy who didn't pitch for 80 games in any level than immediately to get called up. He's been a real bright spot. So final thoughts. Um, the, f- the sixth inning was an implosion by pitching. Uh, Belak, I, I want Belak to be good because I think he can be. Because he showed that he can be, right? Like he'll, he'll have these innings of brilliance followed by the next day it'll be an implosion, right? And he had a couple of really good outings. And then this one, just awful. Only got one out and allowed, you know, three base runners, two runs. That's awful. That's that's bad. That's real bad. Uh, I thought Luis Garcia was fine. Um, I, I honestly don't think he was particularly bad. The three runs isn't great. But this is a pretty decent lineup. So if, you would've, if he would have been pulled in the fifth or, like, after the fifth – it would have been fine. I, I don't think you needed to necessarily push him. I know to that point he'd only allowed a run, but uh, I feel bad even, like, uh, it just feels like nitpicking. Uh, he would throw 92 pitches tonight. The offense, it wasn't bad. The weird thing is, a lot of nights when we have, like, a, a rough night, I can look through uh, the hits and the walks and find out, like, who was bad because there's usually, like, big bald spots. Like, there's usually... A three-batter chunk that was just real bad. And there wasn't that. Altuve had a multi-hit night. Straw had a multi-hit night with two RBIs. Uh, Yuli Gurriel had a pair of hits. So that's all positives. Uh, Altuve had a walk. Brantley had a walk and a hit. Bregman had a walk and or two walks and a hit and an RBI. Uh, Kyle Tucker had a walk and a hit. So like there, players had decent nights. We just couldn't do it at the same time. It would be the first two batters would get on, and then the next three would all get out, or there would be two outs, and then the runners would start getting on base, and then a strikeout would happen. It was just a big game of missed opportunities. Four for 14 with runners in scoring position is bad. It's awful. And 11 left on base is just real, real bad. Specifically, I hate saying this to pick on him, Jordan Alvarez left six men on base while he was at bat tonight. So I suppose if you wanted to find a good chunk of players who were real bad, it would be Jordan, Correa, and uh, Yuli. Because the three of them combined... Now, again, this isn't... This is, you know, how many men were on base when they took their at bat. Uh, combined for 14 left on base between the three of them. Which is... That's, that's horrifying, man. Like, that is real, real bad. And that was it. It was just sort of an off night for the Astros. It wasn't a horrible night. Four runs isn't terrible, but it's certainly not great, and it isn't. It didn't win this one. It was just another rough game, and the Astros now fall back to a game within 500 because ever since I've started this channel, we cannot escape 500. <laughs> None of my teams really can, except the Jets. They escaped 500, but going in the very, very opposite direction. Uh, tomorrow we play the Angels again for the second game of the series at 8.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so that's 7.10 Central. And I am really looking forward to this. It is a matchup of Shohei Otani, who is one of my very favorite non-Astros players. He will be on the mound for the Angels, and Lance McCullers Jr. will be on the mound for the Astros. Boy, oh boy, I am really excited for that pitching matchup. I'm, I'm so pumped. Like that just, mm, That makes me excited to see coming up. Uh, So that's it for the video. I will be back again tomorrow. So thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day. And as always, go Strohs.